Welcome back tonight. It's science that has generated spectacular headlines. DNA solves cold cases. DNA proves wrong people convicted. DNA proves family is related to royalty or one of our founding fathers. But you may not know that this genetic science was first revealed to the world right here out of Orange County in a courtroom 35 years ago today. Investigative reporter Greg Fox takes us back inside that historic case and shows us how DNA is now the gold standard for solving crimes, both new and old. Andrews came into my children's window, jumped on me with a sharp object at my throat and threatened to kill me. Karen Monroe still shakes, recalling the terrifying night of her 1987 rape in this Orlando home praying her attacker would spare her daughters. Trying to like talk to him in between fights, in between being choked, in between being smothered. This meant to me he was here to kill me. Parts of being here was to rape. She survived, and days later, Tommy Lee Andrews, a suspect in two dozen attacks, was arrested. His prints were found on Karen's window screen, but she never saw his face, so prosecutors turn to science. The only science uh, uh, course I took at University of Florida was physics for skeptics. Circuit Judge Jeff Ashton tried hard not to be a skeptic when, as a prosecutor, he stumbled on DNA genetics. First, he saw a news report about DNA identifying a killer in England. Then he saw this magazine ad for life codes about paternity tests and wondered if it could identify suspects. And they said, yeah, actually, we're, you know, there's multiple uh, people working on this, and we're just about to go online for forensic cases. You know, and the, the, you know, came across Tommy Andrews, and the rest is history, as they say. I had no doubt he was going to be guilty. The court commits the defendant to the Department of Corrections. For the Life codes matched Andrews' blood with body fluids at the scene, and Dr. Michael Baird's testimony sold it. Using DNA to help identify the source of a biological sample in a forensic case was unprecedented. So I was certainly aware that this was groundbreaking. Andrews became the first person in the U.S. convicted with DNA. Though when I talked with him behind bars in 2008, he denied it. That's you. Yeah. They I, said, I, I, you're saying this is not you. No, it was when they brought this to me. And I'm like, hey, man, that looked like a bunch of dots. And now we're over 30 people in this biology section that are all working as a team to do DNA testing. And that's every Tim Petrie of the FDLE Crime Lab says DNA can now be matched with microscopic traces. For example, let's say this is a shirt from a violent crime scene. Let's hang it up so you can get a good look at it. Years ago, you might have to have a sample about this size, these blood stains right here, in order to have a viable DNA sample. But now, because the science is so sensitive, you can go in, test the collar, test the armpit area, and potentially get enough DNA to positively identify a suspect. Over 30 years, uh, where we started to where we are now, it's amazing the changes that have occurred. I am assuming this is about the provenance of the DNA in the grand larceny case. TV crime shows have helped all of us accept DNA. Guilty of first degree murder. In this Volusia County trial, it helped the jury understand the genetic link between Robert Hayes and his three murder victims. Police are reopening other cold cases, retesting old evidence. George Gertman, Orlando's notorious Malibu rapist, is facing a new trial in seven cases from the early 90s. DNA testing also led to the arrest of Kenneth Stowe in a 1996 murder. It's also a tool for vindication, winning freedom for those wrongly convicted of heinous crimes. Local men like Clemente Aguirre, Wilton Dedge, and William Dillon, who spent a combined 50 years in prison. According to the Innocence Project, DNA exoneration since 1989, number 375 across the nation, and 21 in Florida. Uh, DNA has opened the door for us to have a better understanding about the existence and prevalence of wrongful convictions and why they happen. Considered the single greatest forensic advancement since fingerprints were first used 130 years ago. I think now is the gold standard for identification. Police can now cross-check 20 million DNA samples in the FBI database to try and match criminals with crimes.
Greg Fox, West 2 News.